Hi. Hi. Yeah, I used to you start. You, you start. start. No, because I don't want to be here. I don't know if you're going to be there. You start. I'll be a mender. <laughs> yeah, she's easy to want to walk. Just put my hair with it and answer some questions. Yeah, let's go for a walk. Let's do it. We're going to go for a walk. <laughs> We decided to come out of the house and go on a walk because apparently I cannot sit in front of a camera in the garden and talk to it. Not sure why. But um but yeah, so I'm gonna go on a walk. If anyone's wondering why it's so sunny in the middle of June, we are back home in the UK. Um we will be back in the UK for a little while now. We're still gonna be doing a ton of through hikes, some long distance hikes around the UK and Europe because now that we're back home it means that we can sort of go anywhere for like a decent price so we're going to do that and then yeah we're going to do a Tierra Doa Q&A video and finally get around to answering everyone's questions Okay, Shells, first question. What do we use to film and edit, and any tips on your video setup? So, for our video setup hiking, we use the Canon SX740, which is just like a point and shoot camera with a flip screen. But it is pretty good. Um, and then we edit using Filmora. And, and we actually just switched over to Final Cut Pro this week. Um, so still seeing how that's going, but I'm really enjoying it at the minute, but I will let you know like how it goes because I am still getting used to it a little bit. Um, and in regards to video tips, I didn't really answer this very well when we were out hiking the other day. Um, but in regards to video tips, I'd say at first just kind of video everything because I guess when you are editing a video together, you really want to create a story and that is something that I'm still working on. There's many times where we've just been in one place and suddenly we're in another. So I would say like video as much as you can at first. Um, although in saying that, you do need to be careful of like your battery life. So if you could take a second battery then like, perfect. But I know that that's not always the case. So then you need to be a bit more careful on what you are videoing, but definitely trying to tell a story. And I would also recommend a camera um, with decent stabilization. Just because when you're hiking, a lot of the time it's going like that. So you need something that's going to sort of even that out um, without your footage sort of being all over the place because I have cut down a lot of footage before now that's been shaky so uh, definitely a camera with a decent stabilisation. <laughs> Okay, so this next question is for you, Jordan. How practical was the umbrella? I think the umbrella was very practical in the sunshine when it was really bright, you could just get a bit of sun off your bike. Also when it rained, but it was really too hot, you could just put your umbrella up, keep the rain off you, but then also feel nice and cool at the same time. Um, didn't weigh too much, just slotted into my bottle, a bottle holder at the side of my bag. Pretty convenient, no inconvenience at all. Okay, so we got this one a couple of times. How did we protect our feet with all the mud and the moisture? And how did we deal with wet feet in regards to blisters, etc.? Well, blisters, we only got, well, I only got a few at the beginning on the beach, and then you got them down again when you were in the South Island on the, on the rougher sections in the mountains. But your feet just get used to the miles or kilometers that you're walking, and they just get stronger and stronger. Yeah. And then wet feet, we uh, we got trail runners for the South Island, so they dried a lot quicker. And then I think we used to have breaks, didn't we? We just used to air our yeah. feet out and air our socks out. And every time we had lunch, we'd just take yeah, all our shoes it's... off. And yeah. Or one of our friends, they applied Vaseline. So I don't know how effective that is, but obviously it waterproofs your feet a little bit more than nothing at all. And then mud, you're in water on the South Island. Even on the North Island, you're in water all the time, so you can just wash your feet. Your feet just get used to it, really. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and the amount of rivers that you cross, mud doesn't tend to be a problem. No. You can just rinse off in the rivers and trail runners is definitely the way forward. Yep, and you're more concentrating on climbing mountains and 
You want to get a bit dirty? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next question. How often did we have zero days and did it change from the start to the end? Yes. <laughs> we used to have zero days. Not that often on the North Island. We actually, we had our first one. I think we started getting one, the first day one nine days. And then I think we tried having one every other week. Yeah. yeah. But we started off with nine days um, at first just because there's a massive thunderstorm and we didn't want to walk in the rain. But yeah, every other week is what we tended to do. And then on the South Island... It depends on each section. If you do, We used to do every long section, so we did the Richmond Ranges, we had a zero day, we did Wild Pass, we had a zero day. Mm. On the South Island, I feel like they are more frequent, yeah. um, especially when you fall off a bike and almost break your arm. And then we also wanted uh, a week off in Wellington, so that was our choice, nobody else's. Yeah, so just to break up both islands, so, I mean, it is your choice on how many zeros you have, but as far as needing them, I'd say like every other week or after like a really tough section mm -hmm. or wet weather. If you're doing the whole trail, it's three to four, three to four months, you do it once a week, that's four, eight, twelve, sixteen, sixteen, yeah. sixteen days. Which isn't too bad. No. We had a month and a half. About a month. <laughs> but you did brought your arms so. Nothing is easy when it's done. What's the next question, Charles? The next question is I'm planning to start Tiara Lower in September. Did you use resupply boxes and how does that work? We did get a few questions on this one, so. Yeah. Resupply boxes, we did do resupply boxes. On the video you'll show that we went and spent about two hours at New World and we sent off, did we send off three or four? Four I think it was. But it took a long time sorting that out. Organise it, yeah. Um, if you got the app, is it the app? Yeah. The, I forgot what the app's called. With now. all the notes on it, the Terra app. Yep, and uh, it shows you different drop off points. So we, our first one we had Richmond Ranges, uh, uh, St Arnold's. The second one was Boyle Village. Boyle, yeah, Boyle Village. Yeah. And the third one, where's the third one? The third one was Arthur's Pass. Yeah. But we noticed a few other people were doing different ones because I think they packed longer sections and we we did sections of, I don't know how you say it. Yeah. And I guess some people don't want to do a big shop of Foursquare, which on the South Island, if you want to resupply and you haven't sent food to there, then that's sort of what you've got to do. So it does work out more expensive yeah. as opposed to buying as much as you can in Wellington. But that's also why you would need a week in Wellington, because that is a big job. Yeah. So there's a little bit more to that question. Um, on how many days can you resupply? And how did we find planning food parcels and planning the amount of food? How many days would we resupply? The longest day we resupplied was nine days, which was the Richards and Ranges. Um, and then I think it was like four, four, five, something like that. Not too much. The only biggest one was the Richmonds, which was yeah. difficult. And then the organising edition and everything else was Shelby. So Yeah, and I guess with the Richmonds as well, we probably could have done with a little bit more food for that. You do need a surprising amount of food for nine days. Um, yeah, we struggled on the second to, day, second to last day. Yeah. But we got through. Very and angry. planning the amount of food. That was hard. We spent a long time in New World. Um, but I guess we kind of just figured out what we ate for lunch, dinner and breakfast and then we just multiplied it by the amount of days. But thinking about what you're going to eat for the next month was hard. It took a lot of, a lot of thinking. Starting on the next question, um, what was our favourite section of the trail? We do get asked this a lot. Um, my favourite section, oh, it's hard. Why you pass was a really cool section, and um, the whole of that section was just epic. Um, Tongare crossing for us was also super cool because we got up at 2 a.m. and um, to do that, so we caught sunrise at the top of Tongare. Um, what was your favourite section? My favourite section I have two. My favourite section was at the beginning at Russell Forest, which luckily we got in two, two to three days before it closed. So 
but I don't think a lot of people may want to see that section. And then one that I didn't think I'd really like, but I did, was the Deception Winger track, Golf Pass. That was really, really warm day. Yeah, it was pretty epic. I know our least favourite section. Well, it's the one on the north side. Mangakawa River. River. <laughs> That's because I kept falling down the edge every two minutes. And it, yeah. it rained the night before and it was just horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. That was the worst section. There was literally just nowhere to walk and it was just a steep drop off. It ended in Gorse. So we ended up taking a massive detour. And I didn't like the road section between coming to take a ball from the top of the section. I like coming down, but then as soon as you go to the road, I hated that bit. Not Stag Saddle. Yeah, Stag Saddle. Oh, to take a ball, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was. <laughs> I was thinking it was on the North Island. Oh, but the bit coming down straight from Stag Saddle was beautiful. Yeah. But it was the road after you got to the bottom of that. Yeah, fair. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, we got another question. It's not really a question. They heard that loads of the Carry Forest are off limits. Uh, unfortunately, that's that is so. There was a there was a one that we didn't go we couldn't go through, wasn't it? it was right at the beginning. That's what it was called. Uh, yeah, in the Northland Forest. So we had to walk with from uh, to Kaitaia from just off the beach. What's that little town called? Harry Parra. Harry Parra. That's it. Um, yeah, so unfortunately the carry dive actually is a constant thing and they're stopping walkers from going. So yeah, most of the forest unfortunately won't be probably walk for a bit now. I know there's a big road section from where Russell Forest where you can't walk, which is a bit of a shame. Well they are doing a lot of the foot cleaning um, stations now, so we always make sure that we can do that. But it is what it is. Hopefully you'll just have new routes and maybe some farmers will let us walk through and you guys walk through in the future. So we did just get to a dead end at the top of the viaduct. Uh, so now on our way to the bottom. Hopefully it'll be a cool view though. Uh, I'll carry on answering some more questions. Although it looks like it's gonna be a road. So one asked shelves. How is phone coverage and what sim phone plan would you recommend to international hackers doing the TA? Uh, so we used two degrees and it was good. We didn't get a ton of coverage. We got enough of what we needed, but some of our friends that were hacking with us, they had Spark and Spark seems to get better coverage when you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, but two degrees are still good. I think on the North Island you get coverage every time you're in a town, which is pretty yeah. much all the time. On the South Island, it's pretty sparse. I know you could get it at the one place on the Timber Trail on the North Island. Yeah, and then I guess, yeah, the longest you go is probably nine, nine days like the Richmond. Because you always tend to come into a town after those big sections of the hills. But... Yeah, maybe five, five days and then a six day or a four day, so. Yeah. Either two degrees or spark. Okay, so this one's for you. Um, how do you rate the Talon 44? Was it comfortable and was 44 litres big enough? Uh, I could have gone with bigger, I should have gone with the 50 litre, but that's because I had stuff. I switched from Auckland, so I had still had a heavy sleeping bag. I mean, we ditched some stuff, but the main majority was still a bit heavy. But if you're doing ultra light or lightweight, yeah, I think it would be well good. I, mm. think. I want a new, new sleeping bag anyway, and if you're getting lightweight gear, and it's nice having the trekking pole holders if you need it. The That's two, a pretty good bag. The two side bags, getting your bottle out was easy. Yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty much enjoyed it. And you could hold a lot of like the knick-knacky bits yeah, of things in that top section. The side pockets were a bit small on your hips, but enough for snacks. Yeah, that's all you need. So I rate it, yeah. I'll let Shelby answer this question. How did we find the TA as a couple? I mean, it's hard to say because we haven't done it individual, but I personally loved it as a couple. Just because, one, everything's lighter. Because you're sharing a tent, you're sharing a cut kit, you're sort of splitting everything. And it's nice when you're hiking, if you see something to be like, oh, look at that. Like that's cool to share the experience with each other. Although I don't know what it would be like on your own, but I also think it would be quite nice. Just to get away from you just a little bit. Not everything was rainbows though. We did, <laughs> we did argue when everyone was tired, when we had tired days and not enough food and we were walking and we wanted to get to camp. There was yeah. arguments, especially if 
I found it hard when Shelby wouldn't keep up at pace, but that's obviously nobody's fault. I'm a faster walker. Oh, she's. Oh, I don't know about that now. Uh, you're you're <laughs> striding into it, but at the beginning it was tough. But you kind of get used to it, you give people their own space. We kind of hiked with the groups all the time, so we kind of. Well, I found it frustrating and hard at some points, but you get used to it and just have a zero. Just say you need a day off if they're winding you up. So. Yeah. And if you kind of want to. You can always walk a bit further ahead if you are like yeah. wanting your own space for a bit, but we loved it. Headphones, podcasts, and yeah. music. Exactly. Yeah. And so the next question we got was what was our budget? So this is funny, we, at the beginning we had a really small budget of like between three and five thousand. But we didn't, we had money anyway so we didn't really budget but we ended up spending 14. Yeah. Which is not bad, which is like, what, that's seven, Which turns out is actually quite normal. Seven and a half thousand I don't know what per we person, <laughs> which I thought is quite reasonable. On the North Island you can get away with not staying in all the hostels like we did. We are staying in quite a lot of hostels, you could just camp. And we're out a lot. Yeah. Most towns we did go to a cafe or we get a drink. I find myself always needing the calories though and feeling deflated from not having enough food or not having enough calories. Some people can just just go and go and go, but I needed the food. So you can probably watch any expenses of that. The South Island is hot, so you don't really spend that much. And once you've resupplied, yeah. in the beginning it's quite a lot, but then over, you don't really need to spend anything for the next like three, four weeks here. Yeah, because you sort of spend that lump sum for the next month in Wellington. And then you can't spend money because you're literally in the mountains. As long as you've got your hut pass, you can just stay in all the huts and everything. And Although I believe that is changing well. the hut pass. I think it's changed at the beginning of 2021, so I'm not sure what, you'll have to look at the website for the I'll latest information that. on the hut passes. Yeah, I think we are going to try and do something, but we've heard it's kind of difficult this year. So yeah, recommended budget for us was 14 if you're a couple, and then obviously seven or eight of solo, depending on what you, you can prioritise other things or you can splash out on what you want. Yeah, if you just camp all the time, it'll be a lot cheaper. Yeah, if you want to camp all the time, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then do that. We'd love to know your absolute must-haves and how you got through the challenging days. Must-haves? What, a gear? Well, gear or...? Yeah, I reckon gear. We'll do the gear nice. when we do a gear review. So we'll, we'll do a video on what gear we took. We don't have some of it now, but we'll just put pictures up. Uh, must haves. Um, I quite like the hummus. Your umbrella. Felt that was a half. Yeah, my, oh, my umbrella. <laughs> That's still gear, isn't it? Yeah, but I'd say it's. An umbrella for me was must my must have. have. Uh, food wise, I would say hummus. You can get powdered hummus, I think, if you want to spend a little bit more. Yeah. What's your must have? My must have. Me? Mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. My must have. I don't know. My bag was pretty cool. The pockets on the front of my bag. I mean, this is a gear one, but um, on the front of my bag, um, having the pocket for the camera was such a big deal. Like that helped so much. And then other gear, I, I don't know. We'll definitely do a gear video. In fact, must have baby food. Baby food, baby yeah. food was so good on the South Island because it's just full of nutrients. It was basically like drinking a smoothie. And yeah, yeah they were real good. Baby food. Yeah, like we said, we are going to do a gear video. We've got quite a lot about gear reviews. There's quite a lot of depth we would probably like to go into on that. Yeah. Um, you, how did you choose your gear? Do you want to do that in the next one? Weight or price? No. Price is just, you just do your research. YouTube, blogs. Uh, YouTube's probably the best one. I also had a bit of knowledge if you enjoy hiking, so you probably know. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you're completely unknown, just YouTube everything. That's what we did. And we probably did a balance of weight and price. Like we didn't want to go super lightweight and end up paying like through the roof because we were still kind of doing it on some form of budget. Yeah. And um, but we did go for like the lightest in our budget. That but we also, if something's not working for you, you can swap it out. Like you're walking to Auckland, Auckland's got everything. You're walking to Wellington, Wellington's got everything. That's what we did, didn't it? We 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 didn't even have the app downloaded when we first started. <laughs> we had absolutely no idea what we were doing. Like novices and understatement on how bad we were at the start. But you learn and you grow into it and then you speak to other people, you meet other people. Yeah. So. And by the end of it, you're a professional. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, so the percentage of time in the tent versus the hut. 
So on the North Island, we basically tented the whole time. And then we did the like time. the odd we hostel. Stayed, I reckon we stayed at quite a few hostels that we didn't need to, but we wanted to. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. We were kind of a bit sick of the tent by the time we got to South Island. And then it was just all huts. Yeah. And then we were ready to start <laughs> tenting again by the end. You did, we did tent in the odd few spots that you that you wanted to. Or you could walk past the hut and tent. Yeah, we did that quite a bit when we wanted to just get a little bit further then. Yeah, you spend a lot of time, yeah, so to wrap that up, you spend a lot of time in your tent on the North Island and then hardly any in the hut, but if you're missing your tent. I got sick of, sick of the huts, to be honest, like, it was nice at the beginning and they were all cool, but then sometimes it's just a bit like, oh. Uh... And it gets quite busy as well. Yeah. But we did love the huts, especially, yeah, like you say at the beginning, because there's just so many huts and every night you know that you're going. Yeah. So stay in a hut, you're going to have a bed. Pretty cool though, if it was raining, you'd have to put your tent up. Yeah. And you get the fire going if there was wood. So yeah, definitely recommend. The next question is one of our favourite things on trail, sandflies. How many um, sandflies did we encounter? <laughs> there was a lot. And so the question is, are there times on trail where they weren't as bad? North Island, yes. I thought, did we experience any on the North Island? I don't think we experienced any on no. the North Island. I don't remember it as much. And then we got to Nelson Lakes and holy... That's definitely the worst place for them. Just with all the water and the forests and yeah, they were bad in Nelson Lakes. The whole South Island was pretty bad. Every time there was a water there was some flies. Yeah, so I just we took a small like bug spray and that helped a lot. Um a few people had head nets. So. A lot of the time when you're hiking they don't tend to bother you. It's when you stop or yeah, you're resting your legs or you're having lunch, then you just end up having a very, very quick lunch and get on with your day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they are pretty bad on the South Island, but I wouldn't let yeah, it put you off. Yeah, you when you walk in, they don't, like, they don't bother you. Yeah. And just cover up, if not, wear a, a small, thin layer of your legs and over your arms. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. And socks that cover your ankles. Yeah. So, as you can see, we are now back home, back in the garden. A little less awkward than we were earlier. I think it's just because I haven't vlogged for a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to answer the last couple of questions now that we're back. Okay, so what's one thing that caught you out or you didn't expect on trail? Caught me out... Uh, tiredness. I actually think I get as tired as mm, I did. Yeah. That's just because of uh, calories. And I also didn't realise... I thought I'd like being around people, but... Being in a group sometimes was challenging and difficult, which I thought was tough. Mm. I kind of like my own space in the end. And especially when it comes to making decisions, you end up having to do a group else. decision, what everybody wants as opposed to... What you want to do. Just doing your own thing. Yeah, and I think also food as well. I thought we got... Like, I knew we were going to get hungry burning all those calories, but... Yeah, when people say hard hunger's not a thing, they're lying. <laughs> it's definitely a thing. Oh, all we wanted to do is eat. I could have eaten yeah. everything in the first day if I wanted. Yeah, it's crazy. And having to like portion that out so that it lasts you was just a lot. Next question is um, what's one thing that you do differently? Nothing, you have no regrets for me. Like, even, even though we were absolutely amateurs and we didn't really plan, we, we grew into it. I don't think I have any regrets either, to be honest. I loved all of it. it was such a cool experience. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing we'd do differently. Um, did you find the hiking times realistic? Um, no, but in a good way. Yeah. Just when you're at the beginning, yeah, because you when you've got your legs, when you're doing the tower roads, the further you go into the mountains and the less away from the road you are, so they get more, they get more, more realistic. realistic. Like a lot of the time, you will beat it if you're coming out of a town or it's a popular route. Um, but definitely, as you get into the mountains they're more realistic but we pretty much stayed on the time or under the time i think the only time we didn't was the first forest retire forest but we did we went fit you yeah get your, once you get your hiking legs you'll be all the time so you just, you just away with, you're away yeah and i think retire forest is a slightly unrealistic time what is it nine nine hours or something but it seems to take everyone between like 10 and 13. yeah but apart from that i think we we're pretty yeah always set off early on. we always set off early for that one we set off for like half six yeah, you need a lot of time that day. Yeah. I think it's because it's your first big challenge on trail. Of like the mud, the, beach. the yeah, the climbing, everything. Yeah. Um, Is that it? Uh, 
if we've missed any more, feel free to send us some messages on Instagram and we'll post them to yeah. our share stories. We'll share them to our <laughs> stories. And also if you leave anything else in the comments. There are just two more. Yeah, we'll though. try and answer them. Yep. And what did we use for maps? And like we said earlier, we the TRO were pretty app. bad at the start. We, we, we were literally just we didn't have a map. We were just walking on the beach looking for the orange triangles. Which and then we realised there wasn't any. There was a couple. Only at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So we were just winging it. We knew we had to stick to the beach. And then so we'd ask people and they're like, oh, you've got a map. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's in the app store. <laughs> oh, that's good. So definitely download the trail app. Um, and that's all we use for maps. And people used uh, Got Hook, but it's not called Got Hook anymore. It's called Far Out. Far <laughs> That's actually pretty good. A lot of people use that. Uh, it's, it's worth the money for your water sources alone. And yeah, and showing you like Everyone's where you videos. are on a hill, like how high up you Elevation, are. Elevation, yeah. That helps a lot on Gut Hook. But you do have to pay for it, it's not super. Yeah, I think it's got far out though. Yeah. And then last but not least, how did you start the logistic phase? I'm doing it next season and I'm very overwhelmed. So in terms of planning, we didn't... I tried to plan at the start of the trail just because we were so excited and didn't really know what to expect. But... I don't know, I feel like you can't really plan a through hike as such. You sort of just got to get out there and do it and experience it. As long it. as you've got your tent, your boots, your sleeping pad and your food and a bag, you just yeah. you learn along the way and then if you want to pick little bits up and stuff like that, just and then you'll meet other people and you might go off with them. Yeah. I'd only plan if you're maybe just doing the South Island because obviously you're starting, you do the Queen Charlotte but then you're straight into the Richmonds. But that planning just comes along with referring to the trail notes and seeing like when you've got a plan for how much food um, and apart from that we didn't really do our else. We went to the gym before we started but I don't think that we, helps. We, I think <laughs> we did our first overnight hike the week before we started the trail to test all our gear. <laughs> That's it. That's so we were very, <laughs> yeah, very inexperienced. If you're on your own, yeah, it's just, you, you just learn along the up. way and you, you just know not to put yourself in dangerous situations. Yeah. Like if you don't know where you're going, then just backtrack, just backtrack and go back and then wait for some other people who were doing it that day right. but the map you can down the I mean, the map's pretty straightforward you don't need a compass yeah. or anything like that and also on that note as well um, just in case you do get lost you should always carry a PLB yeah. we had our Garmin in reach which meant like it means that we can use it whenever we are we just need a subscription whereas like another P a normal PLB you can only use it once I'm pretty sure but well the variety is that you don't really need to use it but it's good to have but always take it do not 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 take it yeah it's not worth it there's some long sections and then the memory card died so um i am going to leave the video there um hopefully we've answered all your questions if there is anything that we missed like do just leave a comment and um i will try and reply back as quick as we can um but yeah apart from that thank you for watching there will be more consistent videos now of us doing some hikes through the UK, through the Lake District, some in Europe, so uh, lots to look forward to. And we will see you in the next one. I don't know what else to say. So for our video set up, we... Just use one t-shirt. I mean, I'm talking shit now. It's nice and cool, but you're getting rained. I'm not getting rained on because I'm talking out my ass. Right, ready? Right. Ready? Yeah, I said yeah. <laughs> no. Someone asked Shelbs, how is phone coverage and what SIM phone plan would you recommend for international TA?